The average solo GP is dead. Being handcuffed to a practice that only makes money while you're drilling crushes your freedom. Being trapped at the office is no way to experience life. And doing more fillings and crowns ain't the answer to freedom. Stop it. Freedom comes when your practice makes money without you. Freedom is choosing how many days and how you dental. Ready to forge your freedom? Then keep listening to become a super GP and super CEO. This is the Titanium Practice Podcast with your host, Dr. Stephen Freeman. Let's go. Hey, welcome back to the Titanium Practice Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Stephen Freeman. Here with you for our very first full episode, and I figured the best thing to be starting out with for the Titanium Practice podcast would be to talk about you. You are the most important thing in your practice, and you always will be. Uh, I've got a right-hand lady, Amy, who means absolutely the entire world to me, and on an everyday basis, she makes my practice go. She's the reason that I don't need to be there and the office is still making me money. She's the reason that I've got as much freedom that I've got. Having said that, I'm still the most important person person, important person in the office. It's just the way it's always going to be. When you are there and present in the office, if you want to grow a successful business that does not need you, if you want the freedom that you need, want, desire then you need to make sure that you are the best person that you can possibly be. There's just no two ways around it. So we look at ways to make you better. How can you be better? Honestly, I really don't think there's any way to make you a better person than starting out with how you deal with your morning. It's so important. Everything is set by the mood, the pace, the everything of what you are doing in the morning. So a lot of what we're going to be talking about today centers pretty much exclusively on how you are going to take care of your mornings from now on. Some of the things you're going to hate, don't care. Some of the things you're going to love, great. But what you need to be doing is being, a, being more intentional about your morning developing a routine for your morning. And I'm always taken back to the pandemic when, you know, some of us were shut down for two months, three months, whatever. And I look back at the fact that I had a routine that gave me some semblance of normalcy at that point in time, a way to continue to manage the business, manage my personal life, manage my weight, manage all those things. Now, after I did my morning, you know, I got up, I jumped in the pool, I watched some Netflix, I jumped back in the pool and sat around most of the day until I hung out with my buddies for just a little bit. And that's pretty much what my days looked like during the pandemic. But in the mornings, I maintained that same routine. And it was important to continue that for, again, normalcy, but obviously, You know, life went back to normal after the pandemic and I needed to be ready to go to give my best for my practice. So we're going to be talking about how you can develop that routine. First and foremost, in order to have an amazing morning, you need to actually be preparing the night before. The night before your sleep is probably the most important part of your morning and you need to start off by setting a bedtime yep just like you're a kid congratulations you're back in your childhood and you need to have a set bedtime and you need to really be shooting for eight hours there are some of you rare birds out there that absolutely only need a couple of hours of sleep but it's extremely rare for folks to only need a couple of hours of sleep you need to be getting eight hours of sleep Your bedtime needs to be counted so that you're getting eight hours of sleep and you're also going to be getting up earlier in the morning. I get up at about 4.30 in the morning every morning. I've done it for at least 10 years now, if not 15 plus years at this point in time. I kind of stopped keeping track. But you need to be getting up early. You know, there's a reason that a lot of these 
proverbs, quotes, statements exist in talking about early to bed, early to rise, make a person healthy, wealthy, and wise. The early bird gets the worm. There's a reason these things exist. It's because they're true. And they've stood this test of time and proved the fact that you should be getting up early. And guess what? It sucks. It absolutely sucks, and there's no two ways about it. It hurts sometimes to get up early in the morning, even with eight hours of sleep. I can tell that is not exactly what the time is that my body wants to be getting up. And the older I get and the longer I've done this, the more difficult it becomes. But I know it's imperative for me to continue to do because I got a lot of shit to get done in the morning. I got a lot of exercise to get to and we're going to get talking about exercise in just a little bit about the things that need to be done in order for you to be having the best day you possibly can. But you need to have the time to accomplish those things because the morning is all about you. Think about what happens when you walk into the office in the morning. Let's take it back even a little bit further. When you wake up, most of you probably have kids. Minimum, you probably live with somebody. You wake up and immediately they start asking things of you. They start sucking energy from you. Now, in some capacity, interacting with them can give you some energy. A cool story from your kid, a, you know, a, a nice hug from your significant other. Stuff like that can absolutely empower you throughout the course of the day, but they start needing things from you. And when you walk in through that door of that practice, it's like they've got this like siphon that they walk up and they just, they just jam it in you and they just start sucking energy. So the only time you got is that first two hours or so in the morning. And I cherish that time. And I do not let anybody interfere with that time because that is for me and is the only time during the course of the day that I've got just for me. So please, please protect that time. Please develop this routine. So I'm shooting for eight hours of sleep and you're set in a bedtime. All right, so I go to bed, it's crazy. I go to bed at like 8.30. Yep, some of you just said that is absolutely insane. My associates tease me about it. My Amy that I talked about earlier, she teases me, teases me about it. But it's been extremely successful for me, so I don't care. You gotta go to bed early so that you can get up early. Most of you are choosing not to set boundaries for yourself and choosing just to kind of stay up and either mess around on your phone, you know, watch some sports that night. And and I do. Do, do I deviate from, you know, my schedule every once in a while? The Super Bowl is coming up in just a little bit. It will run over in past my bedtime. And you better believe it. I'm going to watch the Super Bowl and I'm going to stay up a little bit later. But generally speaking, that, you know, that regular season game that means absolutely nothing, a lot of you are just choosing to stay up and watch that game even though it has no actual bearing on your actual life. Sitting around, love it, I'll say it again, Netflix, watching TV. Again, that was great during the pandemic when I could just sit around and do absolutely nothing, but I got stuff to do and I got my freedom to maintain and that's why I get up and go to bed early, all right? So we're trying to get you a better night's sleep. And you've probably heard it before about the fact that you need to set the stage for a great night's sleep. A dark room. I, I, most of us probably don't even have alarm clocks in our room anymore because it's served by our phone, which I'll get to that in a second as well. But you got to have a dark room. I'm sure a lot of you have blackout curtains. If you do not have blackout curtains in your room, get them now. Please block out that light. Make sure that nothing is getting in there to wake you up. Most of us need a cool temperature room, like 70 degrees and lower, to make sure that you get a nice, comfortable night's sleep. Make sure there aren't any other lights in there that are shining it messes with how your body responds to sleep. So we need to be going to bed early. You need to be stop looking at your phone like two hours before you go to bed. And that may sound insane to you, 
but you will hear me over and over again tell you the phone is the devil. It absolutely is. It saps your productivity. It saps your ability to get things accomplished. It literally carries around radiation that can make you less healthy. And just get off of your phones if you possibly can. The richest people that I know do not have a smartphone. And again, it sounds crazy, but that is the truth. So we're going to get off our phone earlier. You're going to spend time with your kids at night. Please, if you've got kids, family, spouse, spend time with them. Love on them, do stuff with them, and get the hell off your phone so you can enjoy the time with them. Life happens around you, not in some distant interweb. All right? So please get off your phone and spend time with your family. It also is going to help you go to sleep faster, better, all those things, okay? So after we've done that, we need to talk about make sure you're not drinking alcohol, hopefully at all during the week. I partake on the weekends. I do not on the week. And please try to, again, knock it off two hours before you go to sleep. If you've absolutely got to do that during the week, I'm going to tell you it's not in your best interest. I love to party. I love to have a good time. We're always hanging out with my friends on the weekend. I love a little bit of day drinking on Friday afternoons. But please, during the night, or during the week rather, please try to knock it off with the alcohol, especially so that you're not interfering with your sleep in the middle of the night, okay? Uh, I've started meditating uh, a couple years ago now. I'm not even sure how long it goes. I do that with my daughter, and it's been a great thing. So believe it or not, I got some anger issues. So I get angry a lot. I get less angry now. I'm much kinder and gentler. They, all the ladies of the office that have been with me for any period of time will tell you I'm a not much nicer person than I used to be. I contribute a lot of that to meditation. So my daughter is just like me. She is just, just everything about her is she's just a repeat of me. And she's got anger issues too. And so that's one of the ways that we've been helping her dealing with that is just doing some meditation. You can start with an app like Headspace just to help you out, okay? So I do mine earlier than I'd actually like to. I'd like to be doing it right before I go to bed or much closer to when I'm going to bed. But since I do it with her and I put her to bed stupid early, um, I need to be doing it, I end up doing it earlier, but I would encourage you to do it just a little bit later if you can. But again, that's part of me spending time with my family, my kids, uh, to make sure that they're getting that one-on-one -on -one attention. But please, try meditating. Headspace is a great app to just kind of walk you through and get started on it. Um, you know, this doesn't necessarily need to be a thing on the floor where you're burning incense and all that stuff. It's really about quiet time and just noticing your body, all right? Uh, the other thing I do is right before I go to bed, I'm journaling, okay? And this isn't the great American novel that I'm writing, but there are always things that I know that I need to get done. Oh, shoot, I forgot to tell Amy to make sure that gets done. Oh, shoot, I forgot to tell the assistant to make sure that that's done. Oh, I need to make my airline flight reservations. Don't let those things remain bottled up in your brain. Those are the things that wake you up in the middle of the night that you end up thinking about. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and you think, oh, that's right, I need to make those airline reservations, that's it. Now your brain's spinning. Oh, I hope they've got the times that I want on the flight that I want. Those things like that. If you get it down on paper, it's like a physical transfer of the thought onto that piece of paper in the writing, and now you know that it's something that you can take care of tomorrow and it doesn't keep the brain up thinking about it at night so you can continue to have a great night's sleep. All right? So now you've got a much better night happening. Okay? There's some other things you can do. Make sure you avoid caffeine. And, there, and there's just a million things that you can do and you've heard a lot of them before, I'm sure. But those are some really good highlights for you to be looking at to make corrections to your night so that your sleep is better. So when you wake up in the morning, you are ready to kick ass. And that is exactly what you need to be doing every single day if you're gonna get accomplished in your life what it is that you wanna get accomplished. 
So the first thing you're gonna do when you wake up is not grab that phone. The first thing you are gonna do is you are going to make your bed. Now, obviously, if your significant other is in bed with you, makes it a little bit harder, but even if you just pull your portion of the sheet up, just so that it seems like it's made, it is psychologically proven your brain now knows you have accomplished something and it's minor. I can't begin to tell you how minor it is. Having said that, psychologically in your brain, it has conclusively, conclusively been shown to make a giant difference to know that you have accomplished something already when you started the day. It's awesome. Please just try doing it. It's so simple. Just wake up, get out of bed, pull your blankets up. It's all you need to do and you've accomplished something of the day the moment you've woken up. The next thing is, and I already kind of touched on it, and you've heard me say it already a couple of times, for the love of God, please do not get on your phones. Do not check in on your socials to find out what is going on. Everything's fine. The number of times that something major has happened in the world or you're in your circle of friends that is worth ruining your time that you are protecting is not worth it. Please just stay off your phone until you've had a chance to kind of wake up because what we need to be getting to is exercise. Exercise is the number one thing you can be doing after sleep, so I guess number two, to make sure that you are the best you can be. It is the number one determinant that's going to increase your health span and your lifespan. It's better than watching what you eat. It's better than watching what you drink. All of these things, exercise is the key. It burns off stress, it makes you live longer, it makes you happier, uh, it makes you more attractive to the opposite sex. It's great, it's wonderful. Please, just exercise. It's amazing stuff. Now, some of you may not have been exercising. You need to do both cardio and strength training, all right? So if you haven't been car doing cardio, I, I just start simple. Walk five minutes in the morning. And then when you feel more comfortable with walking five minutes in the morning, walk 10 minutes in the morning. And then walk 20. And then all of a sudden you're finding yourself that you're able to do these things, all right? You're able to just go out. You're able to go for a run now rather than walking. And it, it just it, it compounds on itself. Simple things you can do to start exercising with some strength training. Do five squats, five push-ups, and five sit-ups. And just do that for five minutes. It's your rule of five right there. It gets your body moving and it, it begins getting those muscles trained so that you can build on it. So I personally work out for about two hours every morning, five days a week. So my off day is one of the days on the weekend depending on how much I, again, had to drink on either Friday or Saturday night, determines which day that I take off. Doesn't really matter to me, or if I'm going out of town, it might change which one I'm doing. But I do about an hour and 20 of lifting and about uh, 40 minutes of running, give or take, depending on the, the day and what's, what's happening. So I like to hit every muscle. I don't need to go over my entire routine right now pretty happy with how things look, pretty happy with how strong I am, so I know it works for me, okay? On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I try to do HIT running, so high intensity interval training running, where I am running fast and then slow, fast and then slow, and alternating throughout the course of the workout for the 40 minutes or so that I am running. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, what I will do is I will do a different set of strength training exercises where I stay away from the barbell and do more uh, free weights and things like that and cable exercises. Then I alternate in that for either doing a long run as my cardio portion of it or been doing some jujitsu uh, for the other part of the cardio. Man, that is a workout. If you want to work out, that is a workout. So I'd encourage you to look into that as well. 
but that is how I kind of vary that. And then on the weekend, I will do a longer run for a couple of miles uh, to just get a longer run in uh, with all that. That's my workout. That's what's worked for me. Uh, and I encourage you to come up with what works for you. But no matter what, you got to get up. You got to be exercising. Next one, water. Drink lots of water. I, I drink so much water, I drink a gallon of water before I even get to the office when I go in. It's... I. You just got to drink a ton of water. Uh, there's also been studies that have shown that basically the amount of water that you drink dictate, dictates how long you're going um, to live as well. I mean, you could probably find a study to show almost anything that's going to say whether or not you're going to live longer or not. Water seems to have to do with the sodium concentration in your body. And so the more water you drink, the less sodium that's, you know, concentration in there. It just seems to, you just, it just seems to work better is, is what they say. Anyways, I just drink a ton of water. Uh, it's so good for you. It makes you look better. Again, to the opposite sex, just drink lots of water. It's awesome. All right. Lots of water. Uh, next, what I do is I personally do intermittent fasting. Um, all sorts of studies that, you know, none of them have conclusively proven that it makes you live longer, uh, but it absolutely helps uh, with your blood glucose levels uh, and being, you know, concerned about, uh, you know, diabetes. And also, you know, obviously the number one killer in the United States is uh, coronary artery disease. So you've got a problem where we need to make sure that we recognize that for the most part, the Western diet sucks. Uh, it just, it causes all sorts of problems and you need to change up how it is that most people tell you to eat, in my opinion. Uh, I am not a nutritionist. I am not, you know, able to tell you exactly what you should be eating, but I'll tell you that for me, you know, the, the, the health benefit seems to vastly outweigh doing intermittent fasting. And it is hard to start. Most of the cravings that you have, though, are for carbohydrates. So if you can just limit that, it improves your resting glucose level. It's going to help you live longer, in theory. <laughs> and then also the fact that ultimately, at the end of the day, you just need to be in a situation where you have fewer cravings then. So if you kind of reduce those carbs and you go longer in between needing the carbs, you just won't be as hungry. So I typically do uh, 20 hour fasts every day. I have a colleague who I just found out it did like a 21 day fast, which seemed insane to me. Uh, the most I've gotten is just a couple of days. I think it was three days was my longest fast that I've done. I like food too much in order to go that long without it but you really start to see the gains at about the 24 hour mark of the body basically just going in and cleaning out the crap that's been developing since it spends most of its time uh, taking care of the new food that you bring in. It doesn't have a chance to get rid of any of the, the cells and things like that that need to be killed and gotten rid of and, and, and cleaned out. And your growth hormones shoot through the roof uh, when you hit about that 24 hour mark. So. The longer you can do it, the better. I'm not telling you to start to do a 24, uh, 24 uh, intermittent fast out of the gate, nor do I necessarily say it is for everyone. That is, again, just what I am doing. But you may want to do some serious uh, thinking about getting into intermittent fasting. Think about it. The caveman did not have the ability to eat constantly. There was no grocery store on the corner for the caveman to go to. There was no grub hub to deliver that stuff to your front door. It just wasn't there. You weren't meant to eat three square meals a day, just randomly placed so that it can fit within our society. It's just not the way it was meant to be. You were, your body was designed to eat less, and we in the United States have just decided that that's not what we're going to do. We won't listen to what is obviously what our body is trying to tell us that we have a very crappy diet. So please look into that, make some determinations for yourself. And then how I eat when I stop my fast is I eat the things that I know that my body needs and want, wants. Uh, cruciferous vegetables, uh, fermented products. I, I mean, again, we could walk down an entire episode and I probably will someday talking about the gut bacteria. Uh, it's truly the second brain. It's incredible how much we have dismissed it over the years. It's obviously gaining so much more traction, but you got to eat to feed your gut bacteria. That's really what you got to be thinking about. And it's tough to do. I mean, hell, I'd much rather eat a five guys than some sauerkraut with 
bacteria in it. I mean, think about it. It's just, it's a no-brainer, except that's not what your gut wants. I'd much rather have a beer, but it's not what your gut wants. So fermented fr foods, um, some other things like uh, kombucha to drink to feed uh, the gut bacteria, uh, Greek yogurt. I stopped using sour cream a long time ago and use like full fat Faye yogurt that's got bacteria in it. So at least there's some good healthy qualities to it. Um, you know, in theory, I should probably cut that out too, but at least it's got bacteria to help me out. Nuts, berries, seeds. Um, just, I mean, think about it again, going back to the caveman, what did they have available to them? You know, they would have been looking around for everything and this thing's sitting on a bush. And so they grab it and they eat it. I mean, it's that simple. That's what your body needs. Uh, and then green leafy vegetables. I mean, it's just, it's simple stuff. And you guys have all heard all this stuff before, but I feed my body what I think the gut and my body wants to eat first. And then from there, I don't, you will find out you are very full between the amount of water that you've been drinking all day, eating the things that your body actually wants. So then when you actually go to eat, you will eat less of the garbage and I'm not necessarily going to tell you you can't eat the garbage per se if you want that big greasy cheeseburger go for it but you're going to probably find out that you're only going to eat half of it which becomes a gigantic win for your body you and last time I looked at a five guys menu and saw how much a hamburger costs these days it'll save your wallet too so it's a nice win all the way around supplements I keep it real simple for me personally, I take a multivitamin. I do take other supplements as well. I really won't go into those now, but I wanted to hit the big ones. Take a multivitamin. It's what your body needs. Again, give your body what you need. Um, I think it's absolutely huge. And then the other one that I would encourage you to do that I always take in the morning and when I get home from work is a B super complex. I don't know if you guys have ever tried this before, but man, it, 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 it gives you an energy rush. It's great. Uh, it's not like caffeine uh, kind of jitters or anything like that. It just makes you feel more awake. So I know that I've got it going into the office and then just as importantly and probably more importantly, I've got energy to come home and play with my kids and be present in their lives and do things with them because they wanna run around and after a long day, I know that's the last thing you want to be doing is running around. So if you've got a little extra energy boost and you take that right before you get home, uh, right after you get home from the office, then that should give you plenty of time to get it out of your system and still be able to go to sleep just fine. Um, but I, you know, I, I swear by it. I think it's great stuff. Last but not least, one of the things I do is when I eat, eat lunch, I always try to eat it outside. We've got a picnic table at our office. Everybody's office is very different. Sometimes you're in a big, you know, multi-story building and you can't do it, but I've, I've got a space that I can eat lunch outside so that I can be getting vitamin D naturally from the sun. Again, a lot of you probably live up north in the crappiest weather where the sun doesn't show its face for six months out of the year. I'd encourage you to move, but that's a whole nother podcast as well. Um, I used, I'm originally from outside of Chicago and you would just go months and months and months and months, go to work in the dark, come home in the dark, never see the sun on the weekends and you gotta make sure that you're keeping up with your vitamin D as best you can. So if you live in a place like that, you might wanna think about throwing vitamin D supplements on there as well. I tend to forget about that a lot of the time just because of the fact that I am very lucky to live in Florida and have a lot of sunshine that I have access to. But that's it. That's your morning. That's your day. I guess I got a little bit into lunch and eating and even in the evening there. But I wanted you to think about how you can construct your day so that you can be at your best. How can you affect change at the office and at home and make sure that you are there and present and able to run around. I, man, I got 20 year olds that work in my office. I think there's a 19 year old that works in the office as well. You know, they're young, they got tons of energy and as you age and you got a lot of stuff on your plate that they do not have, you gotta be able to run circles around them and it cannot be the other way around. You need to be leading by example of having that energy, that drive, that ambition, all of that great stuff to make sure that you're the leader that you're supposed to be 
and can be present and have gotten everything out of the way. Oh, that's another one I forgot to do, going all the way back to your morning, is when I am done exercising, really the only thing I do on my phone is I will listen to the music as I'm working out and I get my banking done before I go to the office because I need to be present. I need to make sure that stuff's all taken care of. And that's a whole nother great podcast. I know I've mentioned that a couple times of different things that are coming so that you know things that you can be um, um, thinking about. Uh, I do The Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, uh, famous author. Uh, it should be one of our, uh, it is one of our books that we have reviewed at the Titanium Practice website that you guys can get access to, um, to know how you should be dealing with your finances automating things with multiple bank accounts. It just makes your life so much easier. So that again, you can be present at the office and get the things done that you need to be getting done. So I forgot about that one, uh, but I wanted to go back and make sure that I put it in there because I think it is that important to make sure that that is done and taken care of. All right. So that's going to wrap it up for this particular episode. Thanks for hanging in with me there. Please you know, you don't need to do all these things at once. For some of you, these this is like a 180 change about where you are going to be headed between exercise, going to bed early, things like that. Take notes of what those things are that need to be done and just make one change this month. Make another change next month. And so eventually you build this routine. I didn't do these things overnight. You're not going to necessarily do these things overnight. So please just realize the easiest way to eat an elephant or the only way to eat an elephant really is one bite at a time. So to make these gigantic changes for some of you, you need to just start chunking it off, getting it done, getting it taken care of so that you make sure that you can be having the best day that you possibly can. If any of you need additional help, I'd encourage you to check us out over at titaniumpractice.com. And then you can also find us on our Instagram and Facebook accounts but I look forward to seeing you for our next episode. Thank you. Have an amazing day. You've been listening to the Titanium Practice Podcast with your host, Dr. Stephen Freeman. Please hit the like and subscribe button and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Titanium Practice. Questions or comments? Send an email to info at titaniumpractice.com. Join us next time to help turn your average practice into a titanium practice.